Can everybody find where the file transfer window is? I think if you go to the menu at the top, it's under the very first to the far left. You can find the file transfer if you need to get the handout for this. Okay, and just a reminder, go ahead and sign in by um, typing your name and your entity in the chat window. All right, so uh, before we get into the monitoring schedule, I'm just going to go over some reminders. Um, I went into uh, what am I doing. I went into some detail about these last year. So, um, or sorry, <laughs> we're gonna back up even further. Hong would like me to share that she really, really appreciates all you guys getting the data to us for the call for data. Um, I know it was a lot of data. It was a little bit different timing. Uh, TCQ really needed this data in on time so that they could make the um, data set available for this next in, uh, integrated report that they're working on. I believe they mentioned that they're going to start working on this next month. So they're trying to get all of the data uploaded. So anyway, we really appreciate you. I'm sure TCQ really appreciates you. So everyone, thank you very much. Okay, so on to the reminders. So I went into some detail, quite a bit of detail about these from last year, but I just thought I'd give a quick overview again, just some reminders. Um, so just high level, occasionally check your firmware on your field instruments for updates. Uh, make sure you remove the batteries from any of your equipment for long-term storage. Um, make sure you're conducting regular sun maintenance and you just reference your manufacturer's documentation for details on that. Uh, when you're doing your calibrations, always make sure that your specific conductance and air, if you have a meter that is calibrated this way, make sure that that is reading less than three. Uh, if you have a weighting rod flow meter, you need to occasionally zero out slash calibrate that sensor according to the, the uh, manufacturer's instructions as well. And occasionally clean that sensor face of the, um, of the flow meters, and you can do this with some um, mild soapy water and a soft cloth, nothing abrasive, make sure you don't use anything abrasive. Um, if you are using a tablet, laptop, or meter display or your cell phone to collect and record any of your flow measurements, make sure you're downloading those and saving those files on a regular ba basis. And we need to maintain those files just like any other project files for a minimum of seven years. Um, make sure that you're recording any field comments, um, such as days since last rain, even something um, like evidence of animal prints or water is abnormally green or water is a strange color, anything like that. It's, it doesn't seem like much, but it has a great influence on data analysis if we need to like go back and find out why one particular data point is really strange. And also make sure you are conducting your monthly temperature checks on the SONs and then the barometric pressure checks on the displays or if you have an in-office wall bar barometric or a barometer, make sure you're checking that barometric pressure against a NOAA weather station. And if you need any help um, on how to uh, do those checks and do the calculations, just get with me and we can walk you through that. Next thing, um, drought conditions. Since we're going into the summer, we might come up with some of these drought conditions in the reservoirs. Um, the stage and the percent full is analogous to flow for the streams. So it's really nice, really helpful to have that data for any sampling event, but it is especially, especially important when we're during low stage. Um, not all reservoirs have this data available on the Water Data for Texas website, but if you can get that, please provide that to us in your data sets. Um, and if it is not possible to launch a boat or you cannot get within 400 meters of your site, make sure that you are reporting to us the reservoir access not possible data parameter with a value of one. Otherwise, if you can get it, that data point is not reported at all. And again, if, it's a, if you have the situation where you are reporting that data point, make sure you take some photos for your records and for our records as well. Moving on to streams. If the stream is absolutely completely bone dry within 400 meters of the site, um, and I know TCQ is on here. If I'm saying any of this wrong, please jump in and mute yourself and correct me. I'm hoping that I've got all these details correct, but if not, please let me know. 
Um, anyway, back to bone dry within 400 meters of the site. We are going to record all the event information as we normally would. We would just report a depth of zero. And at a minimum, we're going to report flow severity value of six, which is dry, and days since last rain. Um, you can report any other parameters such as air temperature um, that would apply without having actual water in the stream. And again, take your photos for the records. Um, one of the things that we need we need this information for is anytime a site is dry, we are reporting that data to TCQ. It is in the database because all streams, um, any new streams, and, I, and by new streams, I mean any streams that are not um, class, classified or identified by TCQ, it, every stream is assumed to be perennial, flowing all the time, unless we can prove otherwise. And that is that affects how standards are applied to the streams, so we need to make sure that TCQ has this information so that the streams are, are assessed correctly. Okay. Uh, let's see. So streams that we have pools, um, this could either be the entire reach of the stream is pooled, like you can't see the front and back of the, of the pool, but it's not moving, or streams where there are small pools. Um, we're going to report um, a flow severity of one which is no flow. Um, and so, it, again, if you want more details, watch last year's video for this portion. Uh, so if the stream has a pool in it that's at least 10 meters long by 0.4 meters deep, then we're gonna collect all the parameters that you usually would, as well as the pool dimension data. So if the largest pool is not 10 by 0.4 meters, then we're not gonna collect any water quality samples, but we will be reporting the flow severity with a value of one the day since last rain and the pool dimensions, which would be the length, width, um, I think depth and, yes, length, width, depth, and the percent pool coverage in a 500 meter reach. Also take photographs. TCQ does prefer a um, actual measured value. And if we do that, we're gonna report that to two significant figures. So if you can get out there, if you can get down there with a tape measure or a range finder, we're gonna take these measurements and report it to two significant figures. But if you can't access the, the stream itself to get down there and make the measurements, you can do visual estimates, and we're going to report those to one significant figure. All right, and another reminder, the difference between the water column depth and the sample reporting depth. Um, we keep notes on ourselves, so you can see right here above or below the, the tan colored area, we've got the notes to remind us uh, when we take a third of the depth, or one, one foot deep, or um, if we need to do profiles, if we can get profiles in the flowing stream. Um, so for example, at this site, our stream was 0.4 meters deep. So we are collecting our sample at 0.13 meters deep. So you can see over here in the little diagram, our sond is at 0.13, and we're also filling our sample bottles from 0.13 meters deep. So that's so that we don't get the surface scum or um, leaves and stuff floating on there. And also we're not stirring up the bottom sediments either. Okay, um, and so this is a, another example from when we're taking samples on our tablet. We've got our comments to ourselves here again under sample depth. Um, now, if we're sampling from a bridge or it's too deep to wade, we don't know how deep, how deep the stream is, we're going to leave the um, sample, the water column depth field null, and we are going to collect our sample at 0.3 meters, so a foot under under the surface of the water in the as shown in the diagram here. Um, another example would be, you know, like I said, from the bridge, or if you're using a dip cup on a extending pole from uh, from the bank, that would be another case where you might not know the depth. All right, and also make sure that you remember to collect your re uh, reservoir profiles for the sond parameters. Um, we're only collecting chemistry from the 0.3 meter sample or from the 0.3 meter depth, but we're collecting uh, profile depth all the way to the bottom. Um, again, there's some different rules for how deep you go based on the bottom depth. Um, again, watch last year's video for this section for more details. All right, so does anybody have any questions about this part before we actually get into the coordinated monitoring portion? OK, 
Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, Okay, and also invite anybody to just unmute yourselves if anything pops up. Uh, this one is a lot, a lot less um, structured than the previous meeting this morning. So um, go ahead and pop in anytime. Okay, so I am going to open up Google Earth and we're just going to go over the entities very quickly. Um, can you see Google Earth on the screen? Yep. All right. Okay. So I know that our partners are, um, some of our partners are not able to move their stations around. They're tied into some of their other activities, be it uh, watershed uh, protection or um, stormwater monitoring. So I just am going to quickly click through all of these stations to show, um, actually, let me just blow your minds a little bit. This is all the monitoring that we're doing within this, the entire basin right now. Turn on the stream layer so you can see that. We've got quite a bit of monitoring um, throughout the entire basin. We do have a couple of sites that are outside of our basin. For example, this is a Tarrant Regional site that's in uh, Lake Palestine for the IPL sampling. Um, so going back through, just Anybody, um, before I continue further, does anybody have any changes to their monitoring schedules that they have not already presented to me? And as I go through that, I will just click through each of the entities here. So we've got Arlington sampling. A lot of this, um, these sites are on the streams and urban streams and tributaries to the main stem. Uh, we've got Dallas lake sampling here. So this is, I believe this is for water supply protection sampling, um, and this has been going on for quite some time. We've also got Dallas Trinity picking up several sites along the main stem. And we have got DFW Airport monitoring several stations around the airport. All right, Jessica, thank you. I did get a couple of inf uh, pieces of information from uh, partners that uh, they were correcting their lat longs. Um, okay, Robin, I see your comment. Um, we just finished up two years of monitoring on the Clear Fork and South Fork. I believe they're still going to be having some issues, so I'm glad to see that you're going to be picking up there because we're going to move our resources and I'll get to that in a minute. We're going to move our diel resources. So I'm glad to see that somebody will still be sampling in those areas. All right, city of Fort Worth sampling around the city. Um, there's a couple of new sites from last year that got implemented during amendments um, in this current fiscal year 23. Uh, city of Frisco is one of our new partners sampling lots of sites up here around Louisville and also trips into, um, out, I get the rays mixed up. Is that Ray Hubbard? Um, anyway, so Grand Prairie, we've got several sites in Grand Prairie, trips to Mountain, uh, Mountain Creek Lake and the, tri or the Trinity. Uh, let's see, moving on to Irving, Tribs into the main stem. I believe you're correct, Robin, yes. Uh, most of our sites were above Weatherford. All right, Lake Livingston sites. They, pick, they start picking up sampling uh, north of Crockett. Um, I believe TRA's last site is down here near Oakwood, right? I don't know if you can see, yeah, right there. And then Lake Livingston picks up and uh, monitors all the way down to the bay. All right, and then we've got North Texas Municipal Water District sampling all over Levon. Um, so they've got that one really well covered. City of Plano.
nice spread out um, sampling schedule here. Lots of coverage. Um, I'm going to skip down to Tarrant Regional Water District. Now they've got two main areas that they work on and along the um, Clear Fork and West Fork. So they are picking up the most upstream upper bounds of our basin in general. Uh, and also down around Richland Chambers and Cedar Creek Reservoir. And again, they have that site outside the basin that's being sampled um, for the IPO. All right, and then we've got the Upper Trinity Regional Water District sampling the trips to Louisville. Okay, and then our monitoring. Um, okay, thank you, Kristen. So we have several sites that we are picking up some sites for gap monitoring and some of the assessment units of several of the reservoirs. And we're kind of in the middle of that sampling. Um, at, most of y'all know we moved some of our sampling sites around to address various issues over the years. We do have a core set of sites that we keep for long term monitoring and those will likely never change, but then the rest of our resources get moved around. Um, okay, so. Going into our changes, let's see if I'm going to have a slide for this or not. Okay. So, yeah, any, any of your monitoring changes in that table that you that's in the handout, the file transfer handout, just go ahead and double check those. Make sure that the lat longs are correct. Check them against the, um, I think I emailed out all the layers that you can open up directly in Google Earth. And if those look to be a fair distance away from where the official lot longs are for the sites, go ahead and, and make those notes. Again, some of y'all have already provided that information to me and appreciate that. Um, so TRA changes. Uh, one of the things that uh, we solicit to get information from y'all each year is for aquatic life monitoring. Um, we do at least one site each year, um, and these are just sites of general interest. Uh, we sampled in Stewart Creek this past summer, last summer, got really good scores in there. That was up in um, Frisco. This summer, we are revisiting the Fish Creek site in Grand Prairie that we did, I think it was 2018 or 19, somewhere in that time frame. So we're gonna revisit that site to address some concerns <laughs> for, I believe it was habitat and benthic macroinvertebrates. And then we are looking for a site to do next summer. So the summer of 2024. So if, if anybody has a stream that they are interested in having some biological monitoring done on, please let me know. Um, things that we're looking for in a good candidate site is going to be um, a good mix of riffles, runs, pools. Um, <clears throat> riffles specifically for benthics, runs and pools um, for fish and general habitat. Um, and then it has to be weightable. We do have a couple of sites that we've looked at or scouted where it's just extremely mucky. It's really hard to move around in there. Now that doesn't necessarily um, make it not a candidate. It just makes it more difficult to work in and we'd have to uh, do some modifications to how we how we get around in the creek. Um, so anyway, yes, if you have any suggestions, please send those to me. Um, and we could potentially do more than one site. It's just going to depend on what our other other work for the department um, is going to look like over that summer. Any questions so far? Okay, seeing none, I will move on. Um, so we are dropping, we had been doing some diel monitoring on the upper Clear Fork areas, and we also had a site on South Fork, the uh, South Fork Clear Fork, that we were doing um, chemistry monitoring at. And um, so we've spent two years monitoring at these stations. Uh, we had been to most or all of these stations prior in prior years, and we were doing diels then as well. 
So we got or should have 10 samples at each of these sites. Um, and we're thinking about recommending um, that a use attainability analysis be conducted on these sites, the clear fork sites, especially the upper reaches, which are, are intermittent um, and maybe completely intermittent. I don't know if the entire reach will have pools throughout the summers, um, but some of the sites that we've been to go completely dry. Um, I guess it would take more on the ground um, investigation to determine how far it is completely intermittent. Um, but that would be a conversation that we would have with TCQ at a later date. So what we're going to do instead of continuing to monitor on the upper reaches of the Clear Fort is we are going to move those resources down to um, Cedar Creek and Grape Creek around Richland Chambers Reservoir. We did sample these a couple of years ago. Um, and I think these were in relation to a request from Tarrant Regional for a watershed protection plan. Um, Cedar Creek and Grape Creek are both um, showing impairments for low because We're going to go hit them again for at least another two years. Um, I don't know if TC or Tarrant Regional has any. Do you want to jump in here and, and give a yay or a nay on if we should continue to do our sampling or continue our plan to sample in Cedar and Grape? Angela, I can't see the attendees list all that well. So do you, or I don't know if uh, Jennifer or Mark are even on. Uh, let me see. Oh, I see Jennifer here. I'll let her speak. I'm not going to speak for her. Okay. Jennifer, do you have any comments? Well, Aaron, what about you? Do you have any comments? Um, in that case, um, I don't see the issue if you know doing a little more information on both of those uh, tributaries. Okay. Um, we're still try fighting through the state and federal acceptance process for the WPP, um, but I guess any additional information we can get on those those two trips would be helpful in the grander scheme of things. So. Um, unless okay. you've got better opportunities to chase, um, I don't think there's any real downside to doing anything on those two creeks. We've already we, we've already going to be doing WPP stuff anyway, and mm -hmm. uh, more information is better than less. Okay, uh, no, we we um, we were going to use our diel resources. Uh, you right. know, the ability to deploy these songs. <laughs> obviously limited by the number of songs that we have but um so we were planning to move those anyway so we'll go ahead and stick with this are there any additional parameters that you think might be useful so when you say dials that's just your your song parameters the big four yes for the 24 okay. hour deployments okay um i think that'll be a good canary in the mind for us to see if we need to expand anything more but again i don't want to put words in jennifer's mouth and give them any more work than they already have so <laughs> okay i think okay. Until, well, until we get a response from them then um i think sticking with the song parameters is fine okay well if you can think of anything else we might need that might be affecting do i mean obviously we're doing flow while yeah. we're out there and so it may be a flow related issue but if we need to do something like chlorophyll or um i don't know even oxygen demand parameters we could we could look at doing that as well so just let us know <laughs> Thanks. Okay, let me make a note here. Hey, Angela, regarding the Clear Fork sites for a potential UAA, do you uh -huh. have a good segment number or site number that I can write down to put that in our notes? Hold, please. So we were sampling in. Um, we were sampling at seven at station 17455 in segment 0831A. That's the South Fork Trinity. And then we were also sampling at uh, 22313 in 
083304. And then two sites in 083301. Those were stations 17460 and 17463. And we were doing dials only at, I'm looking at my schedule here, 22313 and 17463 were where we were doing dials. We were getting chemistry at three stations, five, all four of those stations we were getting chemistry at. Perfect. Thank you. You are most welcome. Okay, um, all right, and the last change we are making is we had been sampling for a few years at Village Creek at 287. Tarrant Regional is also sampling upstream on uh, Village Creek at Rendon Road, so we're going to go ahead and drop our sampling and again move those resources um, to other areas. Um, so going to pull up the handout here. So y'all have seen this in, in the past years. Um, the way that this table or this file is laid out is I've got um, the integrated report. This is the detail report that TCQ um, prepares every two years. So this is for the final draft of the integrated report. And so you can search through here if you're interested in you know, a specific segment a specific parameter, you can pull that up here. Um, and then I've just got the maps that show um, just a super um, high level summary of which assessment units or not assessment units, which segments are impaired or have concerns in it. So you can digest this at your leisure. Um, then I have the draft monitoring schedule. So if you do have any changes or if you have any other comments that you would like me to keep so basically this comment field, I keep this as a, as a matter of record in my file. So if there's anything that you would like to provide to me to keep in um, this monitoring schedule so that it's, you know, passed forward year to year so that we'll always have those notes, let me know. I'll add that. Um, so for some of y'all, like your station is officially placed, for example, City of Dallas, your station is officially placed at 16809, and this is the lat long that is associated with that station. Y'all sample ever so slightly away from that, but it's still within the bounds of that station, the um, representativeness of the station number. So that's why I've got these different lat longs here. So that's just so that in the future, matter of record. So if you have any changes, any parameter changes or uh, parameter group changes, frequencies, things like that, let me know. And then this table is where everything comes together. Um, this is the way I've been keeping track of any of our records of changes, um, any issues that need to be addressed. Uh, again, high level summary of the integrated report, and this will be updated each time we get an integrated report. Um, you can also expand the columns between these two, and you can find all of the history of sampling back to the 1960s. And that's going to be just a summary of basically who sampled there. It doesn't indicate parameters. It doesn't indicate frequency or anything like that. And so I'm just keeping track of, is there sampling being covered at these sites? And then um, if there's something that isn't being addressed by the current monitoring, um, that's where we have a comment in here. So I invite you all to just digest this, peruse it. Um, and the, this is how I, I pr prepare for my monitoring schedule every two years. So I try my best to make sure that we're getting a good balance of data between long-term monitoring for trend analysis and addressing any needs of the integrated report. Um, so, Unaddressed findings, some of these we've already talked about um, with the changes. There's a couple of areas where I had some questions, you know, do we need to revisit the aquatic life monitoring in some of these places? For example, the Bassett Creek area, access there is an issue. Um, it's private um, land out there. So we're going to kind of make that the, uh, I guess, the opposite of low-hanging fruit. Um, there's a couple of other areas. Uh, the 
for example, here we've got a couple of site or a couple of assessment units in the mid Trinity. Um, there's just zero access there. There is not a single bridge that crosses the river in these two assessment units. So it's very likely that we will never be able to get out there to address these concerns. However, it's in the middle Trinity. We're sampling in the assessment unit above and below. So it seems very likely that if we still have concerns in assessment unit one and four, that there's going to be concerns in two and three. So I'm not, I don't have any heartburn about not addressing those concerns. They're just going to carry forward forever. Um, there is a need for some sampling in B Dice Creek. Um, and I think that that's down in like Livingston's area. Um, that could be something that we could talk about for future sampling. Uh, uh, let's see, also some need for to walk in a creek, and I don't know if that for the uh, assessment unit, specifically assessment unit one of to walk in a creek, and I'm not sure if that's in Tarrant Regionals or like Livingston's um, stomping grounds, so we can talk about that as well offline if we need to. Um, let's see. <sighs> let's see, we've got some uh, Questions. Oh, I do have a question for TCQ if somebody wants to pipe up. There's several areas in Cedar Creek Reservoir, a few assessment units now. Cedar Creek Reservoir is very well covered by um, Tarrant Regional Water District monitoring. There's just a few of these segments that they are not monitoring. Um, what is the recommendation to address these? Just continue on or do we need to and do a special project where we go out and get these assessment units? Hang on, Andrea. Yeah, I'm... Go ahead. <laughs> Angela, this is Laura Reichman with TCQ. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm the assessor now for Basin 8. Um, okay. All right. So Cedar Creek Reservoir for pH. So the concern here is that, you know, like we're missing assessment unit 9, 10, 11, right? When we're when you're monitoring um, there, so let me go to the main page and we'll go down to eight eighteen there. Hang on, I'm probably giving everybody a headache scrolling through here. Okay, so Tarrant Regional is sampling in several of these assessment units, but there is some there are some assessment units that they are not sampling in, uh -huh. um, and that's where the carry forward continues. Um, but there's several other assessment units where they do routinely sample that there, I mean, you can see there's no um, pH issue. You know, if they want to just pick those up, if it's not too much trouble, because pH is one of those ones where you just throw the, you know, you just have the sun just to measure. It's not one that's time consuming and it's also one that doesn't have water samples associated with it. Mm -hmm. If that's convenient for them and they can do it, great. But I, don't, I mean, it kind of depends on how much of a priority they have for this. Okay. Yeah, it would depend on proximity and um, staff for us. So I can make a note of this. Um, Angie, I can barely read this on my little laptop screen. Um, okay. So if you could send me the, the locations, I can talk with Jennifer and Mark and see if this is something we can consider, but again, um, our engineering department has taken all our staff, so um, gotcha. all our new staff positions, so we don't have any, we, we wouldn't have any uh, ability to, you know, get new staff out there or whatever, so depending on what current staff load is, that would probably be why, or the, the reason the thumbs up or thumbs down on this. Okay. Hey, Ryan, I'm seeing, Ryan, I'm seeing this is 5B, so this might be a standards thing, but I don't, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if there's any current um, projects in the works for this, is there? Uh, no current projects in the work right now. Okay. I can confirm that. Okay, thanks. I thought so, but I was, I wanted to double check. Okay. Um, and a secondary question, I guess, then is, um, I think that I remember somebody saying a while back that it takes more data to delist than it does to list. So how much, how many data points would it take to delist if we didn't have any exceedances in those data points? 
Is it more than 10? No. Okay. It, and then that also depends on, you know, if you have exceedances or if you don't mm -hmm. do. So that's, that's why we say that. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And also it depends on which parameter. So there's always Got all it. these caveats. But okay. then it's straightforward. If there's no, no exceedances, 10, I think is the, should be okay. Cause it's just, it just pH. Okay. Okay. Andrew, you're talking about those four stations there in red under uh, column G. Um, there's actually several. Let me, um, okay. if you want to screen cap this, I'll. Yep, that's what I'm trying to do right there. now. So we'll make sure I've got all at the same time. Okay. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. Hang on. See if that's the, all the. the I think that'll work. Right. Yeah. Screen cap that right there. Okay. Give me one second. So, um, it doesn't have to be all of those, just one station within each one of these assessment units okay. will do it. Um, it's just that there was history of sampling at all of these stations, so that's why they're on the list. <laughs> Got it? I do. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Scrolling down a tad more, um, Elm Fork. I I think Dallas is getting some sampling in here. I think that the issue is their lab may not be able to get to the CRP requirements for chlorophyll A. We did in the last couple of years bring their lab under, they, they got NELAP certified. We brought several additional parameters under CRP. Um, it was just that we, I, th I think that was the, the issue is that their lab just couldn't get to those requirements for chlorophyll. So, um, we will address that at a later date again. Um, all right, let's see. We've got again the East Fort or Elm Fort here. Now, any of these uh, dioxins, PCBs in the, this is the fish tissue column or the fish consumption use column. We won't be able to address any of that with normal routine monitoring. All that has to be sampled and handled 100% by. Texas Department of State Health Services. So I pretty much when I'm going through this, I just ignore the PCBs and dioxins that any of the fish tissue parameters um, do not get addressed. Um, okay, so yes, Robin, we were talking earlier in the chat that, that, that we were sampling upstream. So you said you were gonna be sampling at the lower end of these, these streams, so. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, um, does anybody have any other comments or anything that you would like to talk about related to monitoring since we're all here? Uh, just an update from the standards realm. Uh, our UAAs will be conducted on Ash Creek, Dossier Creek, and Derrick Creek within the Trinity River Basin starting here in 2023, uh, September 2023. So that is 0809B, 0809C, and 0809D. Uh, TIER will be conducting those studies for us. So it will be contracted out. Okay, make sure I wrote that down correctly. Ash, Dozier, and Derrett, uh, yes. 809B, I'm sorry? You yes, correct. Okay, um, and that's gonna be starting in September. All right. Is there anything that we need to do or could start sampling there that might help that effort? Um, let me go pull up those segments in my big table here a bit. Uh, not for right now. Um, we're going to have a new project manager on that project assisting tier with the contract. So um, they'll reach out if they do need anything. Okay. Well, it does look like that uh, Tarrant Regional is already hitting those sites. So there is existing and continued monitoring at those in those areas. If you want to screen cap this right here, those are the stations that they are monitoring. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay, Jessica, yes, um, I think that the, um, for the algae analysis, 
I think that the issue, if I remember correctly, and there's a million things in my head right now, that I think the issue might have been that they were not able to get to the LOQ. I, if I'm, and there's no actual NELAP certification for chlorophyll A. There's no field of accreditation for that. It was the CRP required LOQ, so limited quantitation, and the associated precision and bias. So. I will definitely, I'll get with you and we'll check with that to see if there's, if the lab change has affected the ability to get down to those levels. So I'll be in touch with you shortly. Okay, let me just scroll through. Yes, Veronica, I will email this to you. And is that Sarah Burns? Yes, I will email this to you both. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I think that we're done. And again, ahead of schedule, which I know y'all are all super sad about. All right, well, thank you everybody. I really appreciate your time today. And again, if you have any questions, any changes that come up later or anything, just email me, kilpatrickA at trinityra.org. Most of y'all probably already have my email, but hit me up and we'll get it figured out. So thanks everybody.